The narcissist discard is a pattern of uh, behaviour. When it comes to narcissistic individual, they, individuals, they usually have lots of different players in their games. They have someone they're love bombing, someone they're devaluing, someone they're discarding, someone they're replacing the person they're discarding with, someone they're scapegoating, someone they're smearing, someone they're hoovering. And when it comes to narcissistic individuals, it's a pattern of behaviour that they display within their lives. When it comes to a narcissist, they have that sense of entitlement, they have that lack of empathy, they have that exploitative nature, and they are very envious of other people. When they're not getting their own way, or when they perceive somebody not to be serving them as they like, or not to have something to offer them, a narcissist will happily discard one person. They will happily get rid of somebody that they believe to be of no use to them, while they go and seek out a new source of supply. When it comes to a narcissistic individual, the discard is nothing about who you are as a person and everything about who they are as a person. So when they discard you, they will more often than not be love bombing a new source of supply because the narcissist is looking to gain that attention and that validation elsewhere. Now they can go all out to flaunt that new source of supply in your face. So if it's a narcissistic parent, they're going to go all out to discard and scapegoat you while picking up the golden child. And when the golden child isn't conforming, they will turn the golden child into the scapegoat and discard them and come back to you. A narcissistic ex-partner will do this. A narcissistic friend will do this. They will discard one friend and scapegoat that friend and pick up a new friend and flaunt the new friend in front of everybody of what an amazing new relationship they've got with that new friend, that new partner. When it comes to narcissistic individuals, somebody's narcissistic ex is somebody else's narcissistic parent, friend. Narcissists mm. might also hide the new supply in order to cause that intrigue and that confusion. When it comes to narcissistic people, anything they do, they do for themselves. When they discard you, they might go all out to smear your name, to ruin your reputation, to ruin your character, to paint you in a negative light. They're looking to scapegoat you, to get you to take the fall for all the narcissist mistakes and wrongdoings. So a narcissistic parent will happily claim that their children have no respect for them don't appreciate them. And as some children might be narcissistic, adult children might be narcissistic and don't have the respect for their parents, you're never quite sure of who's actually telling the truth, which is why you have to watch people's actions and not just their words. A narcissistic partner will claim that their ex had no time for them, yet the narcissist is the one who cheated on them. A narcissistic person will go all out to ruin you any way they can so that they can remain superior, so they can keep hold of the spotlight, so they can be perceived as perfect. They're looking to make out that everything that goes wrong in their life is always somebody else's fault. The ex is the bitter one, the crazy one, the jealous one, because that's easier than admitting that they lied to them repeatedly, cheated on them regularly, gaslighted them daily. They'd rather manipulate the situation to work in their favour. A narcissist will also go all out to ignore your personal boundaries. The more you ask a narcissist to stop, the more they recognise this is getting to you and the more they will do it. They will ignore all your personal boundaries. And whenever you do stand up to them, whenever you do create a boundary, they get offended. They think you're being awkward and selfish and stubborn because they can no longer get their own way with you. They might keep hold of your belongings, to which they will keep hold of your sentimental items so that you go chasing them and they don't see that you're after the belongings as such. They're just feeling special that you're getting in touch with them or telling everybody that you're the one who is obsessed with them. And they might leave some of their things behind as a little reminder 
of them and also to tell people that actually you're the one that won't give them their stuff back. And no matter how much you try to give them their stuff back, they change the day. They fail to answer the message because they want to make out that you are the problem in the entire situation. They can just simply fall silence on you, ghost you, refuse to communicate with you, which is a blessing in disguise, but that silence can be very painful, especially when you don't know what's actually happening and you're looking for answers, you're looking for closure and you can give chase to them. A narcissist isn't interested in closure, they're interested in control. And when they fall silence on you is when you have to gather yourself, educate yourself on their behaviour and then focus on you and enjoy the peace. A narcissistic individual might go all out to cut you off. A narcissistic parent will go all out to cut off your inheritance, which can hit hard. However, we have to learn to stand on our own two feet, as difficult as it is. They can, a friend can isolate you from the friendship group. A parent can isolate you from the family. A partner can isolate you from your children they're going to go all out to cut you off however as a genuine person can go no contact the narcissist can then twist the genuine person going no contact as mean the narcissistic one again this is when you have to look for patterns of behavior and not words a narcissistic parent will fail to be there for their children you blame the ex you play the victim that it's the ex that's cut them off. So it's looking for patterns of behaviour and not words. A narcissist after the discard is going to go all out to play the victim so that they can gain the sympathetic attention and paint whoever they discarded out in a negative light to be the problem. And also after the discard, if a narcissist sees that you have something to offer them or they can potentially punish the new supply by coming back to you, they will go all out to hoover you. They will come back to suck you back into their games, to treat you like dirt, to discard you all over again. There's lots of different behaviours narcissistic people display after the discard and it's all to benefit themselves. Now, after the discard, the things that you need to do to keep your sanity, to keep your safety to keep your happiness or rebuild your happiness, your health and your wealth. First and foremost, if you can, is go no contact with the individual. If you can't go no contact, it's to go grey rock and limited contact. And people can feel incredibly mean, people can feel incredibly narcissistic. You're not doing it to punish the other person, you're doing it to protect yourself. Now, a narcissist will claim they're doing it to protect themselves, but they do it to punish people and they do it on a regular basis. Educate yourself on their behaviour. Usually, if you're the one questioning if you're narcissistic, you're not the narcissistic one. Well, narcissists don't see themselves as the problem. It's everybody else's fault and never their own none of us are perfect we can all behave in manners that we don't like about ourselves we can all be pushed to our limits and if you take responsibility for your behavior as a general rule of thumb you're not the narcissistic one narcissists don't take responsibility they blame and shame everybody else it doesn't matter what other people think it's about knowing your intentions so well if people want to side with a narcissist, then those people aren't for you. Lots of self-care. So if you feel worse by not doing something, recognise you're going to feel worse by not doing it. And as much as you might not want to do something, crack on and do it anyway. And then recognise that you feel better afterwards. Work on that discipline. Self-discipline. We have... As a society, in some ways, started treading carefully around people, walking on eggshells around people. So when it comes to people's self-esteem over body image and weight, and when it comes to celebrations and overindulging, which is a nation we can do, when it comes to overindulging, we can often be... Oh, don't worry about it. Oh, let yourself go. Don't worry. You can sort it out afterwards. However, if you overindulge and then you feel worse afterwards, 
you actually need somebody that is going to say to you, don't do that because you're going to feel shocking afterwards. You're going to regret it. And then you need within yourself to be disciplined enough to think, no, because I'm going to feel worse. I might feel good in the moment, but the moment, the present moment, that's that's not how to feel good. When in two weeks' time, in that present moment, I'm going to feel worse because of the choice I made in this present moment. You need to have the de drive and the determination and the discipline to make a choice and to stick by it. Anything that you recognise is going to make you feel worse afterwards is not worth doing in the first place. You might feel that miserable that you think, oh, I'm just going to have that one drink. Yeah, if you're going to feel shocking in the morning, it's not worth having that one drink. It's having that negative consequence. So it's having the discipline within yourself to be able to say no to things that are not going to serve you or not, are actually a form of self-sabotage. It's about creating those boundaries recognising your own personal boundaries and not being afraid to set them and recognising that if people don't respect them, you need those boundaries around those kinds of individuals. Process and grieve absolutely everything you've been through so that you can get it out of your head. It's in your head because you're trying to process it all. Write it out, talk it out, get it out, educate yourself, process it, Grieve the loss while looking to create a brighter future. Take up new hobbies or retake up old hobbies. Start learning to play an instrument, start painting, start running mediation, meditation, yoga, exercise, hit the gym, whatever it is that you enjoy. Walks in nature, find the things that you enjoy, group hobbies. Things you can do on your own. Start doing those hobbies again and planning a future that you would like. Start visualising a future that you want and then take the baby steps to get you there. Because like anything in life, you can picture the end again and you can sort of make a choice that that's what you want and then you can dread starting it and because often in the middle it's going to get messy a bit like if you go to clean out your closet it might not look too messy but you know it needs reorganizing as soon as you pull out everything it's going to be a huge mess so oh, i'll just shut the door and not bother tackling that that'll be that'll be okay only it builds up and it builds up and it ends up making you feel worse yeah as soon as you organize it and get through that messy bit in the middle and get it all back you feel better so it's about Making that choice of something that you would like. Making that decision. Then having the drive and the determination to follow through on that choice. Then having the discipline to continue through even when it gets hard, even when it gets messy, even when it gets challenging. And then you've got that self-reward when you've achieved something for you and it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. It's about your own intentions, your own morals, your own values, what you believe is right. As long as you're not causing harm intentionally to another person, then you are, have every right to live life how you want. Now, with a narcissistic individual, you might then think, yeah, but if I go into contact with them, that's going to offend them, that's going to hurt them, I shouldn't be doing that, that's ill intent. That's not ill intent. They brought that on themselves because of how they mistreated you. The more you forgive them, the worse their behaviour is going to get, the more they're going to learn that that's okay and treat more people in that way. The more people that stand up to them, the more chance you've got of a narcissistic individual recognising that this doesn't work. More often than not, they're not because they're just going to blame everybody else. However, life is about being at your best so that you can be at your best for those around you. It's all well and good treating people how you want to be treated. 
But if they're disrespectful towards you, they're not the kinds of people you want in your life. It's about recognising when people treat you in a manner you wouldn't treat them and walking away. If anyone has any thoughts on this video, please do add those into the comments for people reading through. Thank you very much to all the returning subscribers and your continued support with the channel. It's greatly appreciated. If you are new to the channel, I'm Elizabeth Shaw. This channel is all about narcissistic behaviour to give you more understanding of the people you might be dealing with within your life, how to handle yourself around those people if you cannot go no contact and different methods to find what works for you to help you understand and overcome narcissistic and emotional abuse. If you do find the information helpful on the channel, please do subscribe. If you are looking for further help and support in understanding and overcoming narcissistic and emotional abuse, we do have several online guides available and those teachable links are in the video description. If you're looking for someone to speak to, I have partnered with BetterHelp and their sponsored link is also in the video description. I do also have several books out on Amazon, 50 Rules to Deal with Narcissistic People if you cannot go no contact, a narcissist handbook which is the ultimate guide to understanding and overcoming narcissistic and emotional abuse and how to create psychological, emotional and physical boundaries around those who have no respect for your boundary. I shall link those into the description also if you'd like to go and check them out. Go out there and create the day that you deserve because you do deserve to have an amazing day. Bye.